remake versus it's a series about taking an original film and facing it off against a remake film and i thought this was a totally original idea till i decided to look it up on youtube and it had already been a thing for years but despite this i still want to make a series out of it so i'm just gonna go ahead and do the series because why not <laughs> So episode 3 of Remake Versus is My Blade of Valentine, or the original in 1981, going off against the 2009 remake in 3D. Like usual, I'll talk about the original first in the remake. Again, this is like a work in progress. I don't know. I should do like a back and forth thing, but it just makes it easier for me to edit when I talk about the original and the remake because I don't want to make things too complicated. If I do, it's going to mess up. So let's do the original first in 1981. One thing I do like right off the bat is they build this urban legend and myth of this like Mayan axe killer who killed like 20 uh, some odd years ago and then killings start happening a day before valentine's day we get a cool bpov shot which i wish they would have done and kept the rest of the film but sadly there's one thing you know one side thing the old ass lady decomposing makeup affecting that was awesome we get some decent kills cool myth urban legend we try that off with kind of generic boring 80s slasher characters who i don't really latch on to at all they're fine there's this again love triangle bs thing which i don't like at all but it's there we get a lot of stares at you know i fucking know not there's betrayals there's cheating all that stuff and we get horny teenagers that's what you do when the, the slashers the 80s slasher was big at the time there are slashers left and right so it's like you know what we'll just do this as well horny teens and some decent kills some of the decent kills that i like are the water like pipe wrinkle thing what else is there the whole laundry thing that wasn't necessarily kill it, it was a cutaway it's a few of those but it trades off against decent kills on screen the jaw to the eyeball axe kill that was a cool practical effect and there's probably another one i'm forgetting but either way decent kills that's what i'm really here for decent kills because the characters aren't doing it for me at all they're really not like like some of them are likable but they're not great characters or good characters that you could latch on to and that's kind of the issue with this one they're fine they're okay you know and then the day becomes the 14th valentine's day right february 14th love is everywhere there's like love letters and love valentine's day decoration all over town then the final climax or not climax but the final act where it takes place is the mining area and as you would expect it is dark you can see but one of those situations where i decided to watch it at night because i guess i'm an idiot and killings start happening people are freaking out the teenagers are freaking out and in my head i'm thinking what of these kids have to be the killers one of the, is either tom or axel because they have this ongoing feud and whatnot i don't think they sprinkle like a whodunit i don't feel like this film is a whodunit because it explains like an urban legend so i was to assume that the killer the old ass guy from 20 years ago but it turns out the killer is your boy axel because the original mine axe killer killed his father in his i think own room he saw it with his own eye and that caused traumas to his head he's like from that point on he's had these you know thoughts and whatnot he messed him up as a kid growing up now because everything's going on with him and tom and his girl and him getting just broken up i'm assuming i guess he decided to start killing but that happens before he just had his whole love bsn so he, i guess he just snapped one day he's like you know what love is in the air i want to start killing people it was a semi shock but i wasn't like hooray it was like oh, okay he's a killer let's move on and he gets defeated and whatnot and then cops find out rose of credit so yeah besides from the de decent kills and the urban myth surrounding this axe killer this film ain't got much to it it's like it happened around the whole slasher craze back in the 80s because of friday the 13th so it's a replica of that it's a time of that basically of the film so my blade of valentine 1981 is just okay then the 2009 3d remake well i mean right off the bat i do like this already i guess that's a mini spoiler for the end but mainly because jensen al was in it because this was around the time of the writer strike so both him and his co-star jared they want to go do like b-level movies movie like slashers jared went to go do friday the 13th or justin did this my beloved valentine so all i was thinking about is dean winchester go away from hunting life and come here to do something that's all i thought about so the remake starts off and there's the mind shadow whatnot with the killings with the original killer and he starts killing people and whatnot and then main group is against axel and tom tom being played by jensen ackles and axel being played by someone who i don't know and his two girlfriends they get caught in his mind and whatnot three of them get out and leave jensen behind because wanna die which leaves jensen and the killer to themselves just running under the mind the killer's about to kill Jensen. And though Tom Atkins, by the way, he's in a movie. I was like, yay, your boy from Halloween 3 season, The Witch. The best part about it. Or semi best part. He's in it. Hey, that's cool. He's like the cop guy. Him and his cop buddy shoot this killer. He dies. And then there's just a shot of Jensen with his eyes open, you know, eyes wide, being like being traumatized or whatnot. And then it comes to like 10 years later, which means, you know, these characters are a bit older. They're not like corny teenagers no more. So these are older characters. Axel is now a cop in this little town while Tom is left the town. And he comes back to the town later on because he left because he was so traumatized. But what happened to him? 10 
10 years earlier so you know we found out that this whole town is dying because they need the mine but the mine is dying and so mining and the whole mine industry in this little town means a lot to this town because it sort of it saves the town it brings the town together basically and so tom comes back when jits and characters come back he starts talking to people people are yelling at him he's yelling back at them being like hey this is my father's work you ruined it by leaving taking no responsibility which in my head i thought jits is playing a character who isn't taking responsibility doesn't this sound familiar to a tv show that he wants on that ran for 15 goddamn years 15 seasons he has a brother in it called supernatural sounds very familiar dealing with you know responsibilities or dealing with themes of responsibilities sounds very familiar so that was interesting but either way frisco doesn't come to the motel scene killing starts happening bam head killing cheap girl runs away bam she gets stabbed yeah i was like okay this is cool the 3d effects they're not as jarring as like i don't know the 3d stuff around this time back in like 2000s we make craze it's not jarring you know when it's a 3d effect but it's not like it doesn't take you out of it at least for me i definitely knew it was okay that's a 3d effect but it didn't take me out i didn't ruin it so i was like that's 3d effect but whatever decent kill with or without 3d which i like also i think there's an exorcist 3 reference in the little house where the axe killer comes in and kills or almost kills one of the people he comes out of nowhere in the left screen and there's like a loud music i was like is that a exorcist 3 reference i think it is it's done relatively well not amazing but it's like it was on the nose being like that's an exorcist 3 reference i think that's what it is someone correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but i think that was it 3 reference and as much as i really like tom atkins he does get well probably one of the best kills the jaw and eyeball kill from the remake jaw comes out that was really cool like done well and then they do like nods to the remake i mean it is on the nose but it's not it doesn't do any service or whatnot there's the laundry mat scene which i think is done better in this remake there's smoke coming out because the laundry mat's been spinning for hours or whatnot coming out flesh is burning that makes sense and then there's like the whole blankets falling down i could do either one of those honestly either one doesn't do much for me but that was the only two knots that i noticed there might have been more but i guess those two were technically the remake of it basically there's like a supermarket scene which i thought was kind of place weirdly it was still an effective scene but i was like what is this super market scene here doing it gets you know fear and tension up but it's definitely like a huh why is it here it's just there it was cool either way and as the movie goes on we found out more layers to like tom and axel themselves axel with him being caught he's stressed out he has a relationship with this girl who will be important i guess the final girl in the end while well, we learned out when they're driving and whatnot jensen Akko scared tom has been in a mental institution for like seven years and so the remake does a more effective like who done it of like okay the, especially at the motel scene how come tom didn't notice the killings or hear the yellings is that tom and this moment is where it's like is this Axel? Because he was near the killings. He came out of nowhere. They do a better job at the who done it, which I really like. He kind of gives you guessing, even though you like kind of one away being like probably this person. But let's see if they do it good, and they do it relatively well. So we make it to that mind scene, the final act where the final girl has to choose between Tom or Axel. It's a really good like a who done it, who do I choose? Because Axel kind of seems like he's been in town this whole damn time. He's a cop, but he could be a dirty cop. You know, he could be corrupted. And I believe there's an issue between him and the final girl. While case for Tom, the killing started happening once he came in town. And there's that motel scene. It's like who. Is it but the Jensen Ackles character Tom he slips up and reveals too much he knows too much about the dead bodies turns out he was in mental institution there are scenes of him digging up you know the mask and whatnot showing the axe and a horrible edit by the way i will admit it's like kind of edit kind of poorly but either way i still like the reveal being like he kind of knew it was him but it was like they just needed that reveal basically there's even a scene of him he sees the mind killer within himself and so there's the whole final girl final guy running about and whatnot they explain the mind turns out tom survived he takes off a mask he's all blooded up but he survives and it ends Re credits roll implying that the sequel to his remake but super Andrew got renewed for a fourth season a full set 22 plus and i'm assuming box office and critical wise this one didn't do well actually you know, let me look that Back. okay yeah so it has 61 percent on rotten tomatoes which means half almost above above average critics liked it and then made over 100 million which makes sense because this film's budget was only 15 million so it made a lot of, but again jensen ackles he went back to season four of supernatural and then people didn't really like the remake so you know there's that the 2009 remake my bloody valentine i think it's pretty good so it's which one i like which remake i prefer it's the 2009 one because it improves on the original because the original felt so just like a replica of the slasher screens back in the 1980s like the characters aren't memorable at all the remake the characters aren't memorable but it sets like a tone that they're much older they're not horny teens like in the original where it's like okay they're a bunch of horny teens they're all gonna die either way so it's like at least they make more older 10 years older in the remake the kills are more effective and more bloodier they weren't hold back by like the mpaa and whatnot i get if the 3d kind of takes you out of the movie it did a bit but they didn't use it so much at least for me maybe i need to see this movie in 3d but the 3d effects didn't really bother me as much and then the, the whodunit they sprinkling like whodunits tom and axel 
they do it well unlike the original which it seems like it wasn't even there and so that I like that as well and Tom Atkins anytime he's in a movie I like him so that's a positive for me so I think that's it right in terms of the verses because on the original side I ain't much to say about it it's just 80 slasher stuff so I guess in the end My Bloody Valentine the 2009 remake 3D beats and wins the original horrific event this town has ever seen authorities are calling this the Valentine's Day massacre 3D motion picture event to tear through the screen my bloody valentine 3d so that's it i believe this is episode three i don't forgot what episode you know this remake versus is but this is episode three it might be a while if you see it in the next episode i might be lying because i said it, it would take a while until the next remake versus turns out i lied this is like two three weeks later so i don't know when a new a new one's coming so forgive me if i lied i might be lying but that's it so this has been the world so far thank you for watching